Hey everybody, Louis Kibo here at Power Mods. You know, I've got a bunch of stuff to do on this sled today, but this little video is going to be dedicated to installing the shocks on the front of the snowmobile. Now, this is the Fox Float 2 shock, courtesy of H2R Distributing in BC, Canada. I love these little shocks. They're really light, only about two and a half or 2.2 pounds. So a lot lighter than your average or stock shock. Now, there's one thing you got to know about these shocks. They have air in them. You can adjust the air up and down depending on your riding conditions, your sled, how heavy it is, where you're going to be riding, altitude. Now with the good come the bad. Because it has air in it, as the temperature changes, as altitude changes, air density changes, you're going to have fluctuations in the pressure inside. So if you start off with 100 pounds at sea level, if you go up to 6,000 feet, chances are pretty good you're not going to have as much pressure in there by the time you get there. So you might have to make some adjustments. That's the only issue with an air charged shock. If it were nitrogen, that'd be a different story. But you know what? It's the weight that I'm looking for. Now these came off the ZX chassis. They're a little shorter than stock because I narrowed the stance on it. But since I'm narrowing the stance on this, they're just gonna fit up perfectly. So we got pretty lucky. So we get to put it on, get to test them out, see how they work on the rev. It's gonna be pretty fun to do. This installation isn't gonna take very long at all. So did you hear about that new collaboration with Articat and Yamaha? Times are tough in the old snowmobile industry, so it's about time somebody got together and tried to work something out. When you get these shocks, it's gonna come with everything you need to mount them up. It's gonna come with these little O-rings, these little bushings that go inside. Just on both sides. I'm using titanium hardware that I got off eBay. And uh, you know what, I had on the ZX chassis, pounded them pretty hard. And I had no issues with the titanium at all. But I did have issues with the spacers. They weren't big enough. Put two washers in here. Make my own spacers. Another comment, you just heard that come through. Love the comments, keep them coming. If you have any questions, you can always ask me as well. Go. I'm trying to get back to all the questions you guys are asking and all the comments. I really appreciate it, it's just tough. Like I've got 600 in my inbox now, and uh, you know, I want to answer the questions, but I also want to get these videos out so you guys can see them. What's probably going to end up happening is I'll be able to answer them all here as soon as the season's over. In our area of the world, it's not going to last much longer, so I'm thinking probably in about two or three weeks I'll be able to answer all kinds of questions. I love your comments. I'm just releasing some at least the pressure in the shock there, that way I can compress it to get it in the bottom. But I love your comments, you know, I'm not perfect, and I don't always have all the answers, but I love when you guys uh, come up with ideas and suggestions. A lot of you have done some of this stuff before, and you know what, sometimes I'm just darn tired and I forget things, because that's the way it is. We work pretty hard, we play harder, and at the end of the day, I just don't get very much sleep. So, so you know what? We're almost working together on this kind of thing. I really appreciate it. And I know some of you guys can't get out to go sledding. So, I kind of live vicariously through each other, maybe. I don't know. Since I've shortened up the stance on that, I'm going to need to shorten these steering rods, or the tie rods you might call them. Now I'm going to cut one end of this off, I'm going to drill and re-tap it. you got to make sure you cut the right end because there's a reverse thread on this and most people don't have a reverse thread tap. So 
This is the side I'm gonna do it. I'm only gonna take off about an inch and a half by the looks of it. I measured it up on Keeley's sled and that's all he had to take off. And it makes sense because I'm basically shortening it up about an inch and a half on either side. That'll give me a little bit of leeway to, uh, oh, look at that, it's drilled right through. Drilled right through, makes it better for me. I can just tap it, sweet. I'm gonna run my tap down while I can. I'm gonna lubricate it, of course. I'm gonna run it down. I'm gonna use the threads that are on it right now just to make it simple and a little easier to do. That way it'll go in straight. The tap size is an M10 by 1.25. Just so you guys know, come in handy. Save you doing a bunch of searching, trying to figure it out. I did lube this up a little bit. Clean out those old threads. I just sort of work it back and forth. If you start to feel it really bind, don't force it. If you break one of these off in there, or you're gonna be looking for a new tie rod, or steering rod, or whatever you wanna call it. on. I'll just go trim that on the chop saw, tap it out a little bit more, and then that's good to go. Okay, now you can see that if I turn this rod, it's going to be moving at the same distance on either joint. I'm not going to tighten this up until I get my skis in and then I will tighten everything up. I've got these nice Fox Float 2 shocks on. My steering rods have been shortened. I'm just going to wait till I get my skis on and then I'll align everything. So thanks for coming guys. Make sure you give me a big old thumbs up if you like my videos. Subscribe. Check us out on Facebook. You can get these Fox shocks here at firstplaceparts.com, tell them I sent you. And don't forget that they ship free in the United States and they ship USPS in Canada. Thanks for watching.